We have a Felipe. Welcome, Felipe. And Chiara's just joined us too. Good morning, Chiara. Good yes. afternoon. Hi, Rosaria. So lots of people is joining us. Yeah, we have Elisabetta that's just come on now. We have Ja. We have um, Enos is on with us now today. Nadia is on. Remember, guys, good morning. Uh, thanks for joining us on MLA Kitchen today. It's our first kitchen web series episode. We're going to get cooking here in just about 15 minutes. Um, you can chat with us inside of the uh, chat panel on your Zoom webinar feature. So if you look at the bottom there, tell us where you're calling in from. Tell us a little bit about the weather, where it is, or maybe what even you had for breakfast this morning. We have uh, Turismo uh, Educabo is on with us this morning. Says good morning. Good morning to you guys. Where are you guys from? Let's see who else is uh, joined with us on the call today. Alessandro is on the call with us. Anna B has just joined us today. Lots of people are on early. Good afternoon from Gabriela as well. Enos just said, good morning, everybody. Well, good morning to you, Enos. Thanks for joining us this morning on MLA Kitchen. We have uh, Lucia is on with us today. Maria Luisa, hello. Sarah, Valentina, Veronica. Yeah. Wow, we have more than 400 friends that have registered to join us today for MLA's first kitchen episode. And we're going to go ahead and get started cooking here in about 12 minutes today. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Remember the chat feature to talk with us this morning. We have Felipe from Argentina. Wow, from Argentina. Good yeah, morning, yeah. You, Felipe. Thanks for joining us. Felipe, what time is it? Let's... Elisabetta just said good morning. Hello, Elisabetta. Thanks for coming on to MLA's Kitchen today. Nine forty-eight. There we go. Hello, Luca. Luca's just rode into us today. Hi, Luca. We also have Ja has just come on. Lisa. Also from Argentina, Luca. Hi, Luca. And Maria Hi, Teresa. Hi, Maria Teresa. Estrella has come on to us today. She's raised her hand. Good morning, Estrella. Hello, Estrella. Hi, Estrella. If you unmute your microphone, you can join us live here on MLA's Kitchen. Good morning. How are you? Hi. Hi, Estrella. Can you hear us? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Well, tell us, what did you have for breakfast today? I'm sorry. No, I was saying, Estrella, what did you eat for breakfast this morning? I am... Um, uh, I breakfast uh, rice toast with um, um, white cheese and coffee. And a coffee, fantastic. Yeah. We're gonna have a great recipe coming up for you that you can cook over the weekend. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Let's see, we also, Natalia has just joined yes. us now on side of here. Manuela has on with us now. Leticia, people coming from all over the world now. It's really wonderful to see you all joining us so early today for MLA Kitchen, or for some people over in Europe, it's midday, just a bit afterwards. We have uh, Lisa. Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Sarah, if you unmute your microphone, you can join us live on MLA Kitchen. She can't hear us, or she has problem with her mic. No problem. Okay. We'll give you guys an opportunity to talk to us and ask questions. All you have to do is raise your hand, and when Gabriella goes ahead and enables your talking, you just have to unmute your microphone using the Zoom web conferencing Emilia. program. Emilia, can you hear us? 
I can. Hi, Amelia. Good morning. Oh, Sarah. Hey, hey, uh, hello. I can hear you, but sometimes I can't see you. Oh, now no I can't see the same. Right now, we just have the kitchen background up. How are you doing today? Fine. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. What did you have for breakfast this morning? Tea. Just tea, nothing else? No tea, no, no, no toast? Tea, tea muffin, uh, then bread and cheese. And uh, I forgot because I, a, a yogurt, yes. Uh, usually, yes. Um, Fantastic. Well, we're going to have a great American breakfast recipe that you're going to be able to make for your family uh, in the coming week. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today on the MLA Kitchen. Thank you. We've got a lot of people coming on with us now, Gabriella. We have more than 400 people registered for today's MLA Kitchen. Yeah, we're going to be ready to get cooking in just about 10 minutes. Yeah. They say that in Argentina they have a very small breakfast, Carson, and they can't wait for you to show them how to have a good breakfast. Absolutely. We're looking forward to it. What's a typical breakfast in Argentina? Can you raise your hand and we can maybe unmute your microphone. You can explain to us what a typical Argentina breakfast is. Lots of people here that are joining us now. Lots of people have raised us in. Let's see, let's go if we can. Um, yes, of course. So after today's episode, we will send out the recording of today's cooking lesson. We'll also send out the recipes. Uh, you'll get an email from us one day after the webinar with the link to the video so you can rewatch and also the recipes from today. So here we go. So lots of people that are on the call now. Just under 100 people are with us live. We're going to go ahead and get started cooking here in just under 10 minutes for our first MLA Kitchen episode featuring American breakfast. Yes, Katarina, as I said, we'll be sending out this video to everybody one day after the webinar. Um, so you're welcome to go ahead and share that with your students so they can go ahead and watch that. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, Gabriella, look at all the names of all the people that are on with us today. Yeah, I see lots of people is coming. We have Ada, we have Alina now is on with us. Angela is here. Yeah. Elena, lots of Elizabetta. Emma is with us today. We have somebody calling in from a Galaxy phone. Looks like they're on their mobile device. Yeah. Jazz, I wonder where Jazz is calling in from. Let's see, Leah, Lorenzo, Luca. Lots of friends coming on with us today. Thanks so much for taking time to join us today on our first episode of MLA Kitchen. We're gonna be cooking for you live in just under 10 minutes here. And we've got a wonderful American breakfast to share with you today. And it's just written into the chat. Hi. Hello, hi there, nice to see you. Hi, Barbara. Barbara's calling in from Sicily today. How is the weather in Sicily? How warm is it in Sicily today? Barbara, have you had the canola for breakfast this morning? Let's see. Let's see if um, uh, uh, Turismo Education, let's see if you can raise your hands. My colleague Gabriella will try to unmute your microphone there. So. Yeah. Go ahead and see if we can get that hand raised. There he is. Phase two, yeah, Turismo Education. I will allow. Here he is. He can speak now. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm yeah. doing great, thanks. Thanks so much for joining us. Of course. I'm actually very excited to see what we have for breakfast and to see if I can make these buttermilk pancakes at my house. Well, we're so excited to share our recipe with you. Tell us a little bit of what a typical breakfast is in Argentina. So, you know, I'm actually born and raised in the United States, but I've been living here in Argentina for the last eight years now. Here, the, the, the typical breakfast would be some sort of, some sort of a, a tea-like drink. Here it's called mate. And then from there, very small breakfast. So they have like a sort of croissant, maybe with some toast and, and butter or cheese, and that's it. 
they don't have the, the typical American breakfast that, that we're used to. Well, that's perfect. Well, like I said, that's why we call it an American breakfast because everybody has their own cultural dishes to share. Um, but I think that this recipe is gonna be really easy. A lot of ingredients that most people can find inside of their own kitchens. And uh, thanks so much for joining us and waking up with MLA's Kitchen this morning. Of course, thank you for having us. Great. Thank All you right, so let's see. Go ahead, Gabriel. Who else is on the line with us? Uh, we have uh, Gabriele, who is uh, now able to talk and Hi, Gabriele, good morning. Gabriele. Hello. Gabriele, you just have to unmute your microphone. You can join us live on the MLA Kitchen today. Can you hear us, Gabriele? He cannot. We, anyway, we have Matilde. Perfect, good morning, Matilde. How are you today? Matilde. Let's go ahead and unmute those microphones as soon as we enable you for talking and you can join us live on the MLA Kitchen. Yeah. We have somebody else. We have Patrizio calling in again from Argentina. So wonderful. A lot of friends calling in from Argentina today. Yeah. So we're so happy to have you all with us today. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and just share our videos here in just a few minutes when we're ready to go ahead and start cooking. Um, it's just a few minutes before 9 o'clock. I'm calling you from my kitchen in Baltimore, Maryland, which is on the east coast of the United States. And the kitchen is starting to smell wonderful already with all of the, all of the great smells here. So we're going to go ahead and show us your camera for a few minutes. Good morning. Matilde, can you hear us? Good morning. Hi, Ms. Hi. Where are you calling in from today? Hi. I don't speak English. <laughs> Where That's are no you calling from? Milan. From Milan. Wonderful. I love Milan. One of my favorite places. I love to go to the Starbucks roastery there. I know it's very typical American to go to a Starbucks in Italy, but it's one of my favorite places just across from the Duomo. Thanks for joining us, Matilde. All right, just a few minutes here. We're going to go ahead and get started with our live cooking demonstration featuring American breakfast. A few more minutes as friends from all over the world are joining us for our first episode of the MLA Kitchen. And we are just under 150 people now. We have more than 400 people registered. So we'll go ahead and just give a few more minutes for those people to join us on our call. And we'll go ahead and get started. Gabriella, where are you calling in from today? Me? I'm calling yeah. from San Remo. From San Remo, that's up in France. Yeah, it's in the north of Italy, near the border with France. That's great. What did you have for breakfast today, Gabriella? I had biscuits and coffee with milk. And coffee and milk, there we go. Wonderful. We also have a lot of people on. We have Yol now who's joined us as well. Uh, we have Tina on. Stefano is with us today. We have Sandy. We have uh, Patricia. Paula Ornello is with us. I think that's Ornello Marino. Hi, Ornello. Wonderful to see you. One of our fabulous MLA employees from Milan. Lots of wonderful friends with us joining us from all over the world here. So. Just uh, two more minutes and we'll go ahead and get started here on our first episode of MLA Kitchen. All right. All right, so let's go ahead here. Well, good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing today? We want to thank you so much for joining us here on the first episode of uh, MLA's Kitchen. It's wonderful to have all of our friends coming in from us from uh, all over the world. This is going to be our first of our series of sharing dishes from our MLA kitchens to your homes uh, all throughout the world today. 
So we're going to have to take a few minutes to go ahead and get started. We want to make sure, um, make sure to use that chat feature if everybody's able to use and see the cameras. Is everybody good with the cameras? All right, wonderful. If you have any questions throughout today's webinar, you have the opportunity to go ahead and raise your hands using the Zoom webinar feature. When you raise your hand, my colleague Gabrielle will be able to enable your talking. That means that you can unmute your microphone and you can ask us questions throughout today's uh, cooking demonstration for you. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get started. And I'm really happy, as I said, to be talking to you live from my kitchen in Baltimore, Maryland. Baltimore is on the east coast of the United States. It's just next to Washington, D.C., and in between Washington and Philadelphia. Beautiful weather outside. Um, it's a typical spring day here in the United States. So the weather is starting to turn, the trees are starting to bloom, um, and you know we get to have one walk around uh, our neighborhood during this particular time. But I think um, when we have these situations, a lot of people turn to food and we turn to our kitchens as a source of comfort. So I'm really happy to share one of my family's favorite dishes with you, um, which is pancakes. Pancakes are really typical American dish. There's a great history of pancake in the United States. Um, pancakes are typically very easy to make. A lot of families will have fresh made pancakes coming through the house on Saturday mornings when the family gets together. Um, for the breakfast, after the work week, and after the school week is done. We even have a famous American restaurant, which is called IHOP. That's I-H-O-P. And I bet you can all say, uh, guess what the P stands for, but the rest of it is International House of Pancakes. And um, they serve all different types of pancakes with all different toppings, um, and that's all day long. So you can get pancakes for breakfast, you can get them for lunch, you can get them for dinner, or if you're like in college or university, you can even go out to an IHOP at 10 o'clock at night with your friends and you can get a great order of uh, pancakes. Uh, pancakes are really easy dishes to make. A lot of the things you'll find just in your kitchen cabinets there. There's a couple special things that we'll talk about throughout today's recipe um, that we'll go ahead and get started with. But um, it's one of the first things that I learned to cook with, with my father when I was growing up. I remember waking up early with him going down to the kitchen and making pancakes. And uh, the smell is beautiful. It goes throughout the whole house and it'll wake up all of your friends and family. And it's a great way to have a family meal. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna do our first dish today, which is gonna be our candied bacon. So this is a really different way to prepare a typical American bacon. A lot of people take their bacon and they fry their bacon on the stovetop in a pan. Um, and that can be a little bit messy. So there's a lot of grease involved with that. So there's a lot of extra cleanup. Sometimes it splatters on you. It can be a little bit dangerous. What I like to do with my bacon is I cook it off inside of the oven. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with typical American bacon here, okay? So it's about a pound of bacon. It's about 450 grams of that. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put it onto a baking sheet, which I have already prepared. So I've taken a baking sheet that has a little bit of a ring to it. I put a piece of foil that's going to make the cleanup a lot easier. And then I've gone ahead with one of my baking racks and I've put it on top. So putting the raking, uh, the wrap onto the dish is going to allow the heat to go around the bacon. It's going to cook it really evenly to a beautiful crisp. And uh, it's going to make the cleanup really easy. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your bacon and you're going to lay your bacon in strips just onto the baking sheet like this, okay? Now you can ask your butcher for like American bacon. This is not pancetta, definitely not prosciutto. It's a little bit thicker than that. Um, so go ahead and ask your butcher for the best thing that you can use to substitute for American bacon um, for that. American bacon is usually about one foot long and it's just a little bit thicker than you would get like a typical prosciutto, uh, which is really nice. So we're gonna lay all of our bacon out onto our sheet so it's nice and flat, just like so. All right, and then when you're done touching the bacon, let's make sure we wash our hands. Of course, we were touching the raw bacon. So we'll get all of that off of our hands. And then what makes it extra special, what I like to do is, I like to take a little bit of brown sugar, okay? This is brown sugar. Now, brown sugar, you should be able to find in your supermarkets. It should be in your baking aisle. If you don't have brown sugar, you can use um, turbinado sugar. You can even use like sugar in the raw. I don't recommend uh, white sugar. White sugar 
um, doesn't do well inside of the oven like that. But I'm just gonna pinch a little bit of that brown sugar and I'm gonna put a little bit of sugar on each one of the strips of bacon, okay? Yes. There's a question in the chat asking if you use all of the bacon. If I cook all the bacon? Yeah, if you put oil on the bacon or oh, if yeah. you put straight the, on the, the bacon. The bacon has so much fat in it by itself that you don't need any oil whatsoever onto the bacon. That's a great question. But there's plenty of fat inside the bacon, so when it cooks, it has its own natural oils inside of it. Okay? Thanks for the question, though. So here we have our bacon prepared. So this is what it's gonna look like. So now we have our bacon in strips. We sprinkled a little bit of that brown sugar just onto the top of that. And then we're gonna go ahead and put it inside of our oven. We're gonna put that in 325 degrees and that's 163 degrees in centigrade, okay? I have three questions, Carson. Can I let you talk? Yeah, there's another question? Yeah. Valentina. Valentina. Hi, Valentina. Good morning. No, that's OK. We'll come back to Valentina if she's able to unmute her microphone. I've gone ahead and put that inside of my oven, which was preheated at 325 degrees Fahrenheit, 163 degrees centigrade. That's going to go in between 20 and 30 minutes. If you like your bacon nice and crispy, 30 minutes. If you like your bacon a little bit off of the crispy side, 20 to 25 minutes is going to be perfect, OK? All right, now for the star of today's show, we're going to get started with our buttermilk uh, pancakes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our very large mixing bowl, okay? A uh, typical bowl that you would use when you're making like a um, bread or something like that, any type of a dough. Wait, Carson, we have a question from Alessandra. Sure, Alessandra, good morning, how are you? Good morning, fine, thank you. So happy to see you, Carson. <laughs> uh, it's a pleasure. What's your question today? Well, uh, Gabriella is making fun of me because I haven't prepared a real question yet, but... You uh, raised your hand, Alessandra. Pardon? Yeah, but now, now I have a question, yeah, because I was wondering about mm, the time of uh, uh, maintaining your bacon inside the oven for so long. Are you sure that we need 30 minutes? Absolutely, because what we're doing is we have it on a very low temperature. So it's only on 325 degrees, okay? And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow the sugar to caramelize. So the mm -hmm. sugar is gonna break down, it's gonna make this beautiful caramel, and it's gonna go mm -hmm. right on top of that cooked bacon. So it's gonna be a perfect bacon, I promise you. I see, thank you, I try. <laughs> Thanks, Alessandra, I appreciate you thank joining you. us at the MLA Kitchen. Thank you. All right, so let's come back to the buttermilk pancakes. So again, Inside of our dish here, we have two cups, okay, which is 250 grams of all-purpose flour, okay? Just your typical flour, nothing special, just a baking flour that you're gonna take from the store. And then just like you're making a piece of bread, you're gonna start with your dry ingredients first, okay? So to the flour, I'm gonna go with the rest of my dry ingredients. Here inside is gonna be um, three tablespoons of white sugar. That's about 38 grams of white sugar. And then I need to have about one and a quarter teaspoons of kosher salt. That's six grams of kosher salt. So a little bit of sweet and a little bit of salty. And that's going to be a beautiful mix. So we're going to go ahead and put that right inside of our flour mixture there. And then we want our pancakes to be nice and fluffy. So to achieve that really nice fluffy texture in our pancakes, we're going to use both baking soda and baking powder. Now, these are both available inside of uh, most grocery stores. You'll find a lot of them inside of your baking aisle. Uh, if you're not familiar with baking soda or baking powder, you can always put it into Google, see what it might look like or what brand it might look like inside of your country. When I say baking soda, I don't mean like something to drink, okay? Not like American soda, like a Coca-Cola. Uh, baking soda is a powder substance. They're both white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one and a half teaspoons of baking soda and one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. And we're gonna go ahead and put that inside of our dry ingredients. That's um, 7.5 grams. So 7.5 grams of baking soda and 7.5 grams of baking powder, okay? Now, we have all of our dry ingredients going ahead inside here. So we're gonna just go ahead and mix that all together. So we incorporate all of our dry ingredients and we're gonna create a well in the center. So a little hole in the center 
just like you would do if you're making pasta uh, or if you're making bread. So put a little hole in the center and from there we're gonna put our wet ingredients now uh, into the mix. So for the wet ingredients, it's really simple. There's three ingredients. The first one is going to be two whole eggs, okay? So two whole eggs are gonna go right into the center there uh, of my dish. And then I want to use about um, three tablespoons of melted butter. This is just regular butter. Three tablespoons is 38 grams of melted butter. I just put it into a microwave um, dish and I put it inside my microwave for just 15 seconds. And that's gonna be three tablespoons of melted butter into the bag. Carson, will you tell all of them that they will receive the recipe because they are all asking on the chat how much sugar, how they can't follow you properly. Great question. After today's webinar, tomorrow you will receive an email from MLA. It will include the video of today's MLA Kitchen episode and all of the recipes from today. Okay, and we've gone ahead and converted all of our US measurements into metric measurements. So it should be perfect for around the world. So all the recipes, both the bacon and the pancakes will be coming your way just after today's webinar call. All right, Hi. now for the secret ingredient. The secret ingredient to make the best pancakes is going to be what's called buttermilk, okay? Now for the buttermilk, we're gonna use two and a half cups of buttermilk. That's about 590 milliliters of buttermilk. Now, buttermilk, you may be saying to yourself, I don't know if I can find buttermilk in my store or not. That's okay. If you can't find buttermilk, you can use whole milk, you can use just a regular milk, and you can even make buttermilk. Um, so you can even put into Google how to make buttermilk. A lot of times what you will do is you'll just take regular milk, like whole milk, and you'll put about like two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice, okay? And allow it to sit on your counter for 10 minutes. And then that will start the process of the acid from the lemon juice into the milk and it'll create this buttermilk, which is this beautiful kind of thick, um, kind of creamy milk substance, which is fun, uh, it's really wonderful. It tastes a little bit acidy. It's not like a regular milk. You don't wanna drink this, uh, you know, just from the bottle, but cooking with buttermilk for cakes and for biscuits, it's really nice. So this is gonna be uh, two and a half cups of buttermilk which is gonna be 590 milliliters of buttermilk. And it's gonna go right inside of our batter. Carson, you are having lots of success. Yeah. Among our panelists, they all love your recipe. That's wonderful. I can't wait for you guys to try it at home. It's one of my favorites. The other secret that I have for you today is try to get your ingredients to room temperature. Okay, because the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our pancakes onto our griddle. You don't want cold batter going onto a hot griddle. So if you could take your buttermilk and your eggs, if you could take them out of the refrigerator about 20 minutes before you make the recipe, it's gonna allow the batter to really come up in a nice way. So here we go. So now we're gonna mix all of this together in here inside of our bowl, starting from the center, going out to the sides. Now it's going to be a little bit lumpy and that's okay. You don't want this to be super smooth. So you just want to make sure that you're incorporating all of the flour, all of that baking soda, all of that sugar inside of here. And you don't want to over mix. You just want to make sure that everything is incorporated correctly. So just a couple more turns in here to make sure we've got everything off of the bottom. All right, voila. So there you go. So here is our batter now. It's a beautiful consistency, right? So it's not super thin. Okay, it's got a little bit of lumps in it and that's perfect. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to allow this to rest. We want this to rest for about three to five minutes. Resting is gonna give the baking soda and the baking powder an opportunity to do its work, which is gonna make the, a little bit of air uh, inside of your pancake dough. And it's gonna make for a really fluffy pancake once we put it on the griddle. So now's the time to get our griddle preheated. So we're gonna turn our griddle on. And we're gonna want our griddle to be at 375 degrees or 190 degrees on centigrade. Now, if you don't have an electric griddle at home like we have, you can also use a cast iron skillet. Um, a cast iron skillet is perfectly fine. What you want is a nice heavy pan, something that's gonna make the heat evenly distributed. So that way your pancakes cook perfectly um, across the temperature. 
So while we have our, our uh, buttermilk pancake batter resting, we have a chance for just a couple questions. Does anybody have their hand raised and would like yes, to ask a question? I have a lot of people. So Great. the first one who is going to talk is Matilde. All right, Matilde. Matilde. Hi, Matilde, good morning. Matilde. Once we announce your name, you just have to unmute your microphone using the Zoom app, and then you're welcome to join us live on MLA Kitchen. Anybody else with us today, Gabriella? Yeah, we have Clara. Who else do we have with us today? Elena. All right, Elena. Good morning, Elena. Thanks for joining us today. Can you hear us? Once we go ahead and enable your talking, all you have to do is click on Hello? the microphone. Hi, Hello? good morning. Hello, I'm Elena. Good morning. Good afternoon. Hi, I'm in Italy. Good afternoon. Right, good Elena, afternoon. Where are you calling from and what is your question today? Well, uh, I'm from the northern west part of Italy on the sea, okay, near San Remo. I think you know San Remo, maybe. <laughs> close to my little town on the sea, beautiful region. Okay, uh, my question is, which kind of butter do you use? What kind of butter do we use? I use just a regular unsalted butter, okay? So butter without salt. Okay, without salt, but from which milk? With cow, from uh, cow milk? Yes, cow milk, yes. It's just traditional cow, cow milk butter. Yeah. Oh, okay, original butter. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks without a lot. Butter, but without salt. I never like to cook. Uh, without salt. Oh, salt. All right. All right. Hi. Right. Thanks so much for Thank, joining us. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Good. Oh. All right. We have one more minute for our batter to rest. Let's see if we have another question. Yeah. We have Maria Teresa. Hi, Mary Teresa. Good morning. How are you? Maria Teresa. All you have to do is click on the unmute microphone on the bottom of your Zoom app, and you should be able to talk with us live on the MLA Kitchen. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Good morning. How are you? Well, good afternoon <laughs> in Italy. Anyway, my question is, is baking soda something we call bicarbonato di sodio in Italy? Or what's the difference between baking soda and baking powder? I don't really understand. That's a good question. I am not a food scientist, but I know that I use both baking soda and baking powder. Baking soda for sure is the one that gives it more air inside of it. But there's definitely a difference between the two of them. Okay, baking soda and baking powder. Uh, for them. Um, and like I said, I know that they're both readily available in most markets, but you might want to put into Google, um, you know, baking soda in Italy. Yeah, baking you find a translation, yeah. And you I can know, find the translation for them, but they work together. It's like salt and pepper. Because in Italy, sometimes if we don't have yeast or baking powder, we use baking, we use bicarbonato di sodio to make okay. bread, to make cakes, to bake. Yes. So exactly. maybe baking soda is the equivalent of our bicarbonato di sodio. We also use that to wash vegetables. It sounds very that? similar because we would use baking soda when we make our cakes as well. So most of our recipes for cakes would include this. So it sounds like you're on the right path there. But I would definitely go into my Google and I would put it inside to find the right brand for you. Okay. okay? Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. I hope you have success with your pancakes. All right, so I think we're ready to go ahead and get started now with our griddle. So we're gonna go ahead and move our camera over and our batter. All right, here we go. So now we have our griddle that's been preheated. Um, it's got a nice uh, cast iron surface, so it's gonna be cooking evenly. But what we want to do is we want to season the griddle. So season the griddle is getting it prepared. And what I like to do is I like to keep the wrapper on my butter that I used before I melted it today. And I like to peel back just a little bit of that wrapper, okay? So let's see, we're gonna peel back just a little bit of the wrapper here, keeping part of the wrapper on side. 
voila. So that way I can still hold it by the wrapper, but the butter is exposed. And now I'm gonna just go ahead and preheat my griddle by just rubbing the griddle lightly with that butter. Mm, just like that. And it's gonna have that now beautiful brown butter smell coming into it. It's gonna get that beautiful seasoning right on side of our griddle. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started with cooking our actual pancakes today. So now we've got our butter. It's a nicely oiled surface. Voila, okay. And now we're gonna take our soup ladle, okay? And we're gonna start to ladle our pancake batter out. And we're gonna go four at a time so it's nice and manageable. So here we go. That's one, two, three, and four. Now, if you're really adventurous or if you're feeding a big crowd today, you can probably get six on side of your griddle, or you can even get five if you want to go ahead and put one in the middle. Um, but I like four, it's a manageable size for me. And now we're gonna wait. So it's gonna take about um, two to three minutes per side of the pancake. And when you know the pancake is done, you're just looking around the edges of the pancakes. So when the edge of the pancakes, you start to see some bubbles coming up. That's when you know that your pancake is almost ready to be flipped over. So we I'm taking a, a look at my pancake. We have a question from Chiara. Okay, Chiara, good morning, how are you? Good, how are you? Um, Doing great, thanks. Good. Um, we, we, we're called, we're following you from, from Milan, locked down actually. <laughs> um, so pancakes are very good to know now. Um, my, my, my question is about the first pancakes. Usually my first pancakes looks like fried. Is that because I grease too much the pan or something like that? What do you think? Exactly. So the first one that you put out, sometimes there's a little bit of oil left on side of the griddle. So you're going to see some of those like marks a little bit more like swirling inside. For me, I love the brown butter with my pancakes. So it's all just perfect. But if you want to do that, you can take a paper towel, okay, a dry paper towel, and you can just quickly wipe off the excess grease on the surface. And that way, the first batch that are coming off should be a beautiful golden brown color as well. Okay, thanks. Thank you so much for your question. So I've gone ahead and I've turned over our pancakes. So the first side was already good here. And now we're waiting for the bottom side to be done. Again, it's gonna take just about one or two minutes on this side uh, for them to be done perfectly. And we can always cheat. We can always just take our spatula and we can just check the underneath. From Felipe. Okay, Felipe, good morning. Hi. Thanks for calling Emily Kitchen. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. I wanted to ask you a question that um, which toppings do you recommend? Because here in Argentina, we have dulce de leche that goes very well, but which other topping Absolutely. do you recommend? So for me, as an American, there's nothing better than pure maple syrup, okay? So maple syrup from Vermont, up in the north, up in Maine, or even Canadian maple syrup is really delicious onto the pancakes. Now, aside from that, I also like fresh fruit on my pancakes. So it's very typical in the United States to go for um, blueberries, you can also go for strawberries. My favorite is also banana with some walnuts. So walnuts and bananas makes a beautiful pancake as well. That's great, thanks. They also said All right, so our first stack of pancakes has just come off the griddle to a beautiful golden brown color. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get our second batch of pancakes onto the griddle now. And we have another question. Hi, good morning. Yeah. No, we don't. They are also suggesting um, Nutella, Carson. Ah, Nutella. That's a very European topping uh, for a pancake. Of course, Nutella would go on anything. This is very similar to like a crepe. It's just a little bit thicker than what a typical crepe would be. But Nutella would be an excellent topping. What about banana and Nutella as well? That would be like a chocolate banana. That sounds delicious. Hello. Good morning. We get our second set of pancakes onto our hot griddle here. Good we morning. A, a quick question. Do you prefer your fruit inside the batter or on top of the pancakes? 
Yeah, that's a great question. For me, I prefer my fruit on top of the pancakes because I don't want to disturb the batter. The only exception okay. to that would maybe be blueberries. I think blueberries, when they cook inside the batter, they break down a little bit um, and they make this beautiful flavoring. So if you want to put blueberries inside of your batter, you want to wash your blueberries and dry them really well. And then you want to toss them in flour first. So flour okay. and blueberries. And okay. that's going to allow them to stay in the batter and they won't fall through the batter. Ah, so okay, perfect, perfect. That makes flour, sense. And then inside. But I like everything on top. Okay, thank you so much. My pleasure. So here we go. Our second batch is on the griddle. One or two minutes just until we get that golden brown. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to flip them over. There you go. And then we're going to let them set it here. So another uh, one to two minutes on this side until everything is really golden brown. And my friend that just called us in from Milan, you can see the same one. The second batch has another kind of beautiful golden brown color. And that's because there's a little bit less of that oil uh, onto the surface. So it's really great. I wish you guys could smell the kitchen right now. If there was a webinar that had a smell feature, we would have great success. The kitchen just smells of this beautiful, fresh baked, um, like sweet bread kind of smell coming through the kitchen right now. We um, have also the bacon in the oven, so it's really beautiful. Martin, we have a question from Luca. Hi, Luca. Good morning. Oh, hello. Hi. Good morning. Uh, about what you said um, about covering the fruits in flour, uh, does that apply to every fruit or just blueberries and other kinds of berries? Well, for blueberries especially, I like to make sure that I coat them in a little bit of flour that keeps them inside of the batter. They don't sink to the bottom. Um, I don't think that sometimes like strawberries, for example, you don't want to do the same thing because strawberries already have a little bit of starch inside of them. Um, but again, my preference is always to keep the fruit onto the top as well. All right. Then we have another question from Sana. Uh, hello, uh, Carson. Good afternoon. Uh, nice to meet you again. Uh, just I'm wondering, uh, uh, what do you think about uh, using as a topping a whipped cream or a clocked uh, cream? No, I would like yeah. to put whipped cream. I, I love it. That is the beautiful thing about pancakes, is that once you create a pancake in the batter, you get to choose everything that you want. So there's nothing wrong with pancakes. You can even yeah. take the bacon that we've made today, you can crumble it up, and you can put yeah. little pieces of the, the candy bacon inside of that. Of course, whipped cream on anything, I think is absolutely delicious. So it's yeah. not a problem at all. But we can show you what we have here. So now we have all of our pancakes that have just come off of the griddle. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's eight pancakes. It's a beautiful way to start with that. Now the way that I like to top mine, I like to take just a little bit of what we call powdered sugar. Okay, and this was really special. This was from my grandmother. Actually, today would have been my grandmother's 86th birthday. So happy birthday to my grandmother who's in heaven. But I like to sprinkle just a little bit of the powdered sugar on top of my American pancakes. Just like that. Beautiful. And then of course, as we said before, I love maple syrup. Now this is pure American maple syrup. This is coming from Vermont. Okay, so it's beautifully undisturbed maple syrup. So there's nothing better than maple syrup with some pancakes. And let's go ahead and get our bacon out of the oven. There's a question from Cinzia saying if she can cook pancakes in the oven. And here we go. Look at this beautiful cooked bacon. You can see how all of the sugar now has melted and caramelized on top of those beautiful strips of bacon. And now it's perfectly ready to serve. Martin, we have a, in, in the chat, we have a question from Cinzia saying if she can cook pancakes in the oven. No, I wouldn't recommend cooking pancakes in the oven. I think you need some even heat. I would recommend, like I said, some type of a griddle or a cast iron skillet um, would give you the absolute best results for that. Okay. Now, if you are cooking for a lot of people, what you could do is you could save your pancakes in the oven. So you could put your oven onto a very low setting 
And then you could, as you make your pancakes, you could put them onto a platter inside of the oven until you're ready to go ahead and serve. But here you go. So here is our finished product today. So here is a beautiful plate of American buttermilk pancakes with that candied bacon with brown sugar and then some real American pure maple syrup to go on top of it. So this is our favorite American breakfast. I like to cook this for my wife on the weekends. Uh, we get to get up and relax and we get to spend some time around the house together. So I hope that you have an opportunity to cook this recipe. We will be sending the recipes out tomorrow so that everybody can try this recipe at home. We thank you so much for joining us today on the first episode of MLA's Kitchen. We look forward to providing this webinar and the other series of webinars with you in the coming weeks. Um, next week, we have one webinar that's dedicated to our teacher training course. We have a webinar on Thursday that is for our students, where you can have a chat with um, Luciano Spinelli, a famous social media influencer uh, from Italy. And we have another MLA Kitchen episode that is coming your way on Friday with another kitchen from the MLA family with another great recipe uh, coming into your home. All right? So from Baltimore, Maryland, I want to say thank you so much for joining us. It's been a real pleasure. Bon appetito. Enjoy your breakfast. Thanks Hi. so much. Hi, everybody. And please write, write your comments <laughs> on our Instagram if you try the recipe, OK? Hashtag MLA moment. We'll be waiting for you. We absolutely, yeah, please share your pictures. So MLA Moments on Facebook or Instagram, show us your buttermilk uh, pancake recipes that are gonna be coming out to that. Tell us how it tasted. Uh, we will send the recipes out tomorrow, plus you have the video so you can re-watch us here on MLA's Kitchen um, for the future. But it's been a real pleasure, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Stay Thank safe, you. stay healthy. Bye from Gabriella, bye.